Sales Wolf Podcast number 2 We are the original Sales Wolves. Ow! I can't be the original. We got to figure it out. I, I want to howl, but I can't do it with we, you guys. We, we thought we were going to have a howler finally, but uh, we didn't. Oh, um, I, I will howl. I just <laughs> I felt, I felt, I felt <laughs> uncomfortable. I'm not an original. <laughs> so I did not want to be you know, okay. inauthentic there. Uh, so. Yeah. So, I'm Joseph Caldwell. This is Tyler Harris. Tyler Harris, and we have a special guest today. Uh, this is our number 2 podcast, and we have Dr. Rebecca Heiss. Does some incredible things nationwide uh, on the speaking circuit, which that's where I heard her, and I was super impressed. There's a lot of things with self awareness and and um, and her research and, and stuff on cortisol is incredible. We'll get into all that, but uh, I wanted her to be able to introduce herself. <laughs> well, thanks for that introduction. I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Um, so I have a, a really different background from most people that you have on here. Uh, I'm a biologist by trade. You're female. So I'm female. Which is, which which is, is different. Thank you for noticing. Yeah. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I'm also I'm a biologist, so I'm a, I'm a huge nerd, right? I have a PhD huh. in physiology, which means that I study hormones and behavior. <laughs> and um, I came to that through evolution and human behavior. I was really fascinated by what makes people tick. Why do we do the things that we do? <laughs> so I uh, got my PhD, started teaching, realized it really wasn't for me. I love teaching. I love the energy of the kids. I can't deal with some of the BS and the red tape that that keeps me from really engaging and getting them excited about learning. That always kept me from getting excited about education. Right, right, right. Because at the end of the day, right, what I can teach you, you can can look up on Google what I'm allowed to teach you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The best thing I I can tell my students is go out and get a passport, right? Travel, go see the world, go do some things, go experience life and be aware. How old were your students? uh, 18. Okay. Mostly, yeah. That's awesome. So, so you're a college professor. So high I taught I taught college, and then I taught at uh, the Governor's School for Science and Math for a number uh, of years, right. and then I was involved here in building Next High School in gotcha. Greenville, which is oh, cool. sort of an entrepreneurial school. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's an interesting Neat. mix. Anyway, so I've been speaking for the past year now, um, and building up some of the research that I'm doing on on stress, physiology, and hormones, and how to move out of this survival mode that we live in, hmm. and to a better place of thriving. So that's sort of why I'm here today, I think, so what we're going to talk about. So what we figured was, 20 episodes in, we need to actually have someone with like education. Educate <laughs> someone with <laughs> formal, no, formal wait schooling. Wait a second, wait a second, time out. I, I want to put this out here right, right away and say it's a piece of paper, right? That's literally what it is and it opens doors and it's great, but it's a piece of paper. Everything that I've learned, I've learned outside of school for the most part, my formal education. There's not people where people usually say to like dentists or something, just a piece of paper. You're not a doctor. You know. Chiropractic. Chiropractic. Oh, yeah. I'm not let's a see, let's make some more people mad. <laughs> who else, who <laughs> else <laughs> degrees off? Who else's degrees don't matter? <laughs> who else doesn't? Not, let's, let's just come up with them all and list them. It's true. It's true, though. Like, I'm not a useful doctor, right? I, I try I mean, and help people. it's useful. People, like, you're going to be able to tell us some stuff about wolves that we didn't know. Probably. I'm definitely going to tell you about wolves, and especially wolves. sales wolves, which are a unique breed. Yeah. So and we just got a few prescriptions from her, so... <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Don't cash those in yet. <laughs> that was supposed to be under the table. That was some, that's funny shit right there. <laughs> you're like a stand-up comedian today. What yeah, is it today? Know. Like you're not really that funny. <laughs> but you're funny today. You're funny. No, but if you if you want to spit no in the cup, anymore. we can, no, we no can work with that. I'm rubbing off. Yeah, <laughs> not that way. That's uh, not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> Oh man, I think we're about to go live on Facebook here. Three, two, one, uh! Facebook Live. What's up, Facebook Live? For those of you that are watching here, we are now on Facebook Live here, which is at the Tyler Harris page. Where do we find you? 
Uh, I don't know. Where do we find me? The Joseph the Caldwell. The Joseph Caldwell. The Joseph Caldwell. And what are you on? RebeccaHeist.com. So, Rebecca Heist. Or well, Instinctive H E I S S. That's correct. H E I S S. So uh, um, thank you guys for tuning in live here. So um, you just want to jump right in. I mean, first question we had for you is what do you see uh, holding most people back from success? Uh-huh. Could that start? Yeah, yeah that's, absolutely. A, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, to me, and you remember, I cited the brain, right? Yeah. So the thing that I think holds people back is their subconscious. <laughs> because the subconscious is the source of all of the stories we tell ourselves, all of the excuses we make, the laziness, the uh, just all of the fear-based decisions, mm-hmm. right? So the amygdala, the limbic system, that ancient system that we operate that out reptilian. of. Reptilian. Reptilian brain, you got <laughs> it, exactly. And people operate from that system 95% of the time, okay. which is wow. terrifying, right? Yeah. Like if you think about that, you're making decisions out of fear, out of mm-hmm. laziness, because you're in this survival mode, right? Which is the pre-programming that Jeez. your brain, yeah. you're born with, right? So you that know, means we, what you're saying. Like we've been talking about this just like privately, not in this for like the last couple of weeks, which is so interesting. That's it all. Is. Because like the five second rule we've been talking about yes. so much. The five like, second rule? Five like second not the thing rule. that you <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, It is that rule. <laughs> it's that's 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 what it's based we on. By the way, science well. gets funded to do stuff like that. <sighs> Clemson just, just did that awesome. study. That's awesome. Turns out you can eat you can eat safely. You can find, Tur- tell me about the Turns out rule, after <laughs> three million dollars of research that six seconds is still okay. You're it's right. still okay. <laughs> Thank you, Clemson. Thank you, Clemson. Isn't that your alma mater? Piece Cancer, piece you, can paper, you, you can wait. You can wait. really need to test this five second <laughs> yeah, rule. Bacteria is important. So, to give me the five second rule. Sorry. The actual five yeah, second rule. So, so basically, it was saying that like as soon as you have the thought to make a decision or to do something, that you have five seconds before your brain will take over mm-hmm. and go right back into the fear and preserve itself. Be, bas- right. Basically, keep you safe, and safe yep. being is something unknown or Nothing something else. risky. So, so, so yeah, so I'll throw so I'll throw a, a wrench into that yeah. thinking, right? Because you put your hand on the hot stove, you pull that that hand back before you're you even aware that. of the pain, before you're aware that it's hot. Mm-hmm. So your subconscious will will make you act Based before on- you're consciously aware, before your frontal lobe even engages. So there's. That five second rule gets a little dicey. And so, if it's a decision but... like to make a phone call or mm-hmm. not, mm-hmm. Well, that's not a hot stove. It's not a hot stove, but it's, right. like but it's still triggering. You've already processed that yeah. in your subconscious before you're even thinking, am I going to make that phone call? Okay. Right? So, you're saying even before. before you're like negative that, five seconds. Yeah. I, before you're <laughs> aware of it, it's happening. <laughs> that's yeah. a this good is, this you is actually the time are operating before here. time. <laughs> <laughs> Time this is some Einstein continuing. shit right here. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And that's the weird part, right? That's actually, in some ways, really, you're joking about it, but in some ways yeah. accurate because you're not aware of the time right. that you've already hmm. made this decision. You're consciously now thinking you might make this decision. You've already made it. Hmm. All right, so what's the things that you see uh, keeping people from success? First question. They're subconscious. Yeah, that so fear, operating, operating from that, right? So moving. So how do you not operate from yourself? So that's that's sort of what I've been working on, right? That's right. the research that I've been doing. Um, and do you most have some of, CDs that we're going to start listening to when we sleep? <laughs> no, but I do have an audio <laughs> file that you will have to listen to. <laughs> that's good. You is special. <laughs> you is kind. You is <laughs> smart. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, That's what I listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Look, positive reinforcement is important for sure. Um, oh the God. idea, the idea that I've been working with, is Sorry. getting out of this this portion mm. of your brain, right, yeah. hmm. and becoming what I call instinctively cognitive. So. Your instincts are operating here, okay. but we are in this really unique position as humans um, to control our own evolution. Right? We understand our brain. We've created the technology. I mean, look at this. We're posting on Facebook yeah. and you know, connecting with people, and we're in a sheltered room. We're eating, f- we're drinking water out of bottles. We're not C- caffeinated <laughs> right. water. We're not exactly struggling to survive. Yeah. But our brains are still operating like we are, hmm. which is dumb. Which is what we're cre- how we're which is how we're pre-programmed. How we've evolved. But you have the option, world. right? You mm-hmm. have the option to switch on and rewire your brain and start processing through your frontal lobe and mm. making conscious cognitive decisions. Huh. So that's that's where my research has been, and a lot of that that's is just reducing stress. Okay. So um, I talk a lot about cortisol, which is the main stress hormone that we all produce. 
Um, and I know you're going to get into that, so I don't want to jump no, in on that. No, we can go right into it. We can go into that now. Absolutely. No I just reason. don't want to like jabber too much here. No, that's absolutely uh, no. I'm, that's probably what I'm. That's why we bring smart here. people on here so <laughs> they can talk <laughs> and boost our ratings uh, and I boost remember, our likes. I remember I was watching this. Uh, I remember I was watching this Dave Matthews Band DVD one time, and he just starts like playing something random, and the, the crowd's just going crazy. And he goes, "My goal is to one day be able be able to just come out here and play one note." And he's like, "Just one note." And have everybody go crazy. And have everyone and still go get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what we're trying to do. Is like at some point we'll just have our podcast and we'll never say a word. And never say a word. We're just gonna slowly <laughs> creep, slowly, out of the slowly creep out of the way and just watch the likes uh, and the followers. Man, like, thanks for turning in the sales, Wolf. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> man, I do want to. I do want to take on that house. So cortisol. Yeah, court is this great slash horrible hormone, right? Okay. Especially for sales wolves. Because you all live on cortisol, right? Mm. Stress is the thing. And I, when I talk to people yeah. like, like the two of you and like your audience, right? Yeah. You're like, no, I thrive on stress. I need stress. <laughs> yeah. But what you're talking about are those acute spikes. Yeah. You love this. Set. You love going in and having this challenge. Mm. And everybody needs that. And that's part of your court response. Is that like what happens to you before you walk up to speak in front of a group Absolutely of people? Absolutely. Every right. stinking time, right? It gets addictive, doesn't it? It's awesome yeah. it is and that's actually by the way it operates on the same circuit as sugar and drugs Dopamine. and sex and everything yeah. else right so you get it all of which i spice, love right <laughs> <laughs> i'm a fan right but you, and you want to ride those you want to you want to ride <laughs> like, a roller, like a roller coaster just like, like a, a roller like coaster, a roller coaster, coaster. coaster. <laughs> right <laughs> It's a circle. I need to this, stop. These lights just got me really out again. <laughs> I just broke out in the full. Uh, you Baby want, sweat. like, because we're all excited about that. That, mm. that turns us on, that gives us that dopamine, and it's yeah. great, right? The problem is, what's happened in modern society, um, and especially with, with people with your positions where you're always turned on, you're always mm. high, is there's this other level of cortisol we call baseline cortisol. Right? Uh, and that's how you generally operate. Gotcha. And if your baseline cortisol is, say, up here, now suddenly those little, or those spikes, you're not getting as much out of. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to ride that whole spike, mm -hmm. but if you're operating here, you're not getting nearly as much of the high and the dopamine. So it's like every time you have a spike, it's not going all the way back. Correct. And your here's the problem. So how do you the control that? The baseline level, well, I'll, can, I, can I come back to that in a second? <laughs> Because I want to tell you a little yeah, bit more is, about the course. This is your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the course line comes at the end of the show. Excuse gym. me. I'm, I'm in the middle of a podcast that you guys can just... Uh... <laughs> no, the, the, the cool thing about the course is... Uh, this is why you should never invite a speaker. You remember we had Tom Shea on here? It was just like this. It was just... No. <laughs> 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 no, but no, but he would he was talking and, and we would be like mm -hmm. and then he would just continue and people yeah. love that podcast and we didn't say a whole lot. So this is gonna be good. No, I'm sorry guys. This is this is why you don't want to invite a speaker on because we don't <laughs> shut up. Right? I love it. Keep rolling. All right. So cortisol. Cortisol is actually this horrible it's like oxygen. We all think like oxygen is great. No, it it actually kills you, right? It's hmm. this weird paradox. Yeah. Cortisol, you need it. And it gives you those highs and that's great. But it also is a really detrimental molecule. So high levels of cortisol, or if you have that higher baseline cort, which is the dangerous stuff, that chronic stress that mm -hmm. probably most of us experience, what that does is it kills brain cells, first of <laughs> awesome. all. So it lowers your IQ. <laughs> let's, let's start this there. Just a little more important. <laughs> <laughs> I just became vastly interested. <laughs> It, this? It, I'm not even sure if I use the right thing. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so what it does is it lowers this, it's called a BNF, right? Or wait, let me get this right. BDNF. Yeah, which is a protein that's basically a I fertilizer. I'm going for that one, though. Right? <laughs> yeah, no. no, it's a good thing. You want this, right? This right. is like the fertilizer for your brain. It helps new cells grow. It keeps, it protects the, the cells that are already there. And what court does is it lowers that. And it punches holes through the actual cell walls of your neurons. Wow. So it kills your oh brain gosh. cells, lowers your IQ, and this is like immediate. Wow. Um, it also... Can that, can that process be reversed? Yes, to some degree. And we can talk about that for sure. Can but you link this to Alzheimer's and stuff yes. like that? Yes. So it's also linked to, to the six major 
the six highest number of deaths or diseases that cause death. So Alzheimer's, heart disease, um, mm. even accidents because people are stupid when they're operating on high levels of core huh. and they become sleep deprived and you yeah, have all cells. of these, yeah, they have dead brain cells. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a nasty chemical. It's a nasty <laughs> chemical. You're going to be like, that. <laughs> you need to pay attention to this. <laughs> You're like, you need to pay attention to this. It also, so like, basically really destroys <laughs> <laughs> She is basically outlining <laughs> your life right now. <laughs> oh, man. No, no. It, it um, also seriously suppresses your immune system. So you're more likely hmm. to get sick. That makes sense. Um, and it lowers dopamine. So people okay. that, that have high yeah. levels of stress often seek out ways to increase their dopamine levels, which means drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it is. Yeah. Mostly sugar. Yeah, and then yeah. you get obese and you know there's all kinds of issues with that that's my drug of choice it's my drug of choice as well sugar. that and caffeine sugar. right but I just crave it mm-hmm. seriously well it's probably your cortisol levels oh, yeah, I'm sure i mean I'm sure <laughs> seriously no, tyler has resigned himself <laughs> he's like <laughs> i'm sweating cortisol right now. <laughs> I smell it coming off of you. Is there a particular it's smell? The it's, it's the lights. It's the lights. It's these heat lamps. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the beauty, the beauty of what I do is I get to help people with these, all of these problems because That's my awesome. whole goal with instinctive cognition is to lower baseline cortisol levels. Um, so not to do, keep you from the spikes. Not to keep. No, you want the spikes. Everybody, That's the greatest part huh. of life. But to lower the baseline so those spikes are higher and feel better and you enjoy that dopamine on the way down huh. more. Um, There's like no crash. Right. Kind of feeling. Right. Hmm. And you're able to live a little more fulfilled, content, you happy life. You don't need like three monsters a day to That's, just stay Are they away. bad? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, I'm not a medical doctor, so this Camera is not man. medical Camera advice. Camera please don't bend to the corner of the room. <laughs> the Where there's a case of monster in the corner of the room. And we're drinking yeah. we're caffeine, caffeine water. water. Caffeinated water. Caffeinated right, water. By the way, this will increase your cortisol levels, so cheers to dead uh, brain cells. There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pouring out Bottoms from my, up. Pour, pour out <laughs> from my <laughs> drinks brain cells. For the people who have died of cortisol poisoning, <laughs> we, we're going to oh, represent um, them. Yeah, Jeez. so oh, not, not the greatest stuff. That's that's very it's right, extremely so, so interesting. So how do you how do you uh, how do you lower the levels? Like what? There's a lot. There's a lot of techniques, right? And that's one of the things that I've done in the program that I'm off right now. It's I'm not doing yoga. That <laughs> so. you don't have to. You don't have to. And that's dude. If I ever came in and you were in downward dog, I don't know what I would do. With I've myself. done hot yoga before. Like so the, really, like the Bikram. Yeah, it so was, fine. It was not pleasant. I, I literally the whole around. room. Did you go? Did you go? <laughs> probably got wet. Did you go to that place on Woodruff Road? Yeah, I did. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So what was that one? That one and the one right Southern Ohm. Is that one still right there? Yeah. Ninety degree yoga. Yeah. Southern Ohm. I think yeah, I've been to that one. That one. I went yeah. to Southern Ohm. Went there a couple and times. It was literally a comedy show because yeah. I would get in these positions and and they would say these things and I would be like. Breaking. I was just like so loud and they would be like, you know, they hand you those little like, oh, do you need the little block for, uh, to help you get there? And I'm like stacking four of them. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so impossible. So impossible and sweaty. Oh my God. <laughs> the good news is I'm not going to make you do yoga. Right now, That's good. It's not. 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 <sighs> so what are so what are the ways? So there's a lot of ways, right? Okay. Um, and where's uh, I handed you that book earlier. I've put together basically a journal of, of ways to help people moder- you know moderate their cortisol levels. But a lot of it is basic stuff that we all know to do anyway. It's exercising. Yeah. It's drinking water. It's making sure that you're getting your fluids. It's cutting back sugar. It's mm. um, it's breathing, <laughs> which sounds really stupid to a lot of people, especially. Us very driven, like mm-hmm. no, you have to take a moment. Because here's that. this is how you connect your conscious with your subconscious. Because yeah. you can control your breath consciously. See, I right? thought a few minutes ago you just said that oxygen was bad, so it I've is. been literally holding my breath for 15 <laughs> minutes here. <laughs> the oxygen. So the funny thing is, yeah, kill you. I actually did go uh, to a chiropractor um, like twice ever but um <laughs> they told me that i was a shallow breather oh yeah and they were telling me that i needed to work on breathing deeper and heavier um and the funny thing is when i do get in some super stressful situations just this last week 
um, like on my sixth, seventh, eighth day on the road and just working these crazy hours, I found myself um, Short of giving, a, giving a group presentation Short of yeah. and having myself have to consciously like figure out when I was going to fit in deep breaths because yep. I was running out of breath. Yep. It wasn't like a panic attack, that, but it was like being conscious of like needing to breathe. Yep. yep. And like, and, and I kept sniffing because I didn't want to, I felt like it was super obvious. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm kind of a, like, that. Yeah, like I'm yeah. a kind of a loud breather anyways, my wife says. And, <laughs> and uh, that sounds like a joke, but that's me serious. No, I know, but I... I <laughs> that sounded like the best, quickest joke we, ever. We all know it. <laughs> Thank you. She's not the only this one. This is an that's intervention. <laughs> That's Tyler. So uh, this is why is we're having this podcast. Darth Vader mask? <laughs> so this podcast is all about intervening on <laughs> the your, your loud breathing. Come out here <laughs> we have some people to testify here. Uh, yeah. I'm actually a breathing expert. That's why I'm here today. Dr. Yeah. Phil's about to walk in. <laughs> give us a little talk. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, I, I found myself. That um, happened to me. And I kept thinking, I'm like, I'm like, this is so stupid because I would equate it to like being in, out of shape. I was yeah. like, this makes no sense. I was like, I was doing cardio yesterday. I was like, completely fine. I was like, mm -hmm. I haven't, like, because sometimes if I get like in a period of time where I'm not working out as much for like six months, right. I'll notice things like that. You know, little things just like with your, little with things your like health. Little things 50 pounds like heavier. Like breathe. Yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, consciously thinking, I was like, wait a second. I'm like, that shouldn't be it. But I was like, con I was literally conscious, consciously thinking, okay, I know I'm going to have a pa a dramatic pause for passion for in passion. this presentation. At that point, I'll make sure I get a deep breath in there and I'm good. And I kept on going and like pretending like I got a stuffy nose, literally, so mm -hmm. I could just suck some air in. It's weird. No, it's so not tell weird. Us, that's, tell that's us about that because that's, that's a, that's a right. stress response. That's yeah. literally your cortisol. So think about evolutionarily or, you know, think about your ancestors, mm -hmm. right? They had to run away from... A predator or yeah. they had a bad storm or there was some threat that they had to escape right that's what's happening so your palms get sweaty your mm. digestion shuts down basically anything non-essential shuts down huh. your breathing rate increases to get oxygen to the muscles to make them <laughs> run faster um. your heart starts pumping faster so you're basically prepared to run or it's the fight. flight or fight yeah it's running, flight or fight yeah. right but you're standing there trying to give a presentation mm -hmm. and people get this a lot to you? Uh, yeah, actually, it did. In the beginning um, or now? I don't get it, it so much anymore. Yeah. Uh, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about that, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I, I don't get that anymore. I get a, I get a nice spike of adrenaline, but yeah. it's not an uncontrolled, yeah. you know, that court response that you mm -hmm. really, yeah. really get shaky and stuff mm -hmm. on. Um, huh. But yeah, the, the perceived threats, and that's the thing. It doesn't have to be an actual threat. It's not a bear breaking through the, the room right now. Yeah. Right. Um, but any perceived threat? No, because we're sitting at the table doing a podcast. <laughs> well, I don't know these lights are kind of hot. <laughs> so my yeah, grizzly Adams. I'm straight with my bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> they could have laughed from the cameraman. That's good. But there's surround sound on that one. Right. <laughs> so to and we have me, Jason Runkle in the room with us today <laughs> <laughs> filming. So tell me the. Um, so how do you test? what someone's current levels are yeah so okay and this is this is really important because there's a lot of different ways to test it so this is also a surprise <laughs> it takes a rubber glove and you <laughs> but like we you're nominated you we nominated today. you actually hang on hang on a second we can <laughs> do this <laughs> we can do this right My now are, are you ready My levels are spiking <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you do it. ready yes i'm very ready big reveal so all it's of these, it's, I just said the big reveal. This is just salivary collection. You gotcha. literally spit into a tube. Spit, okay. Yep, or drool would be the preference, you know. Really? Yeah, you don't want to spit. Just kind of like sit there and passively drool into this. Um, and I can That's measure no your base. <laughs> <laughs> We're so used yeah, to that. Just have Joseph talk for a little while. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so, I mean, you can measure it in blood. You can measure it. I in honestly was thinking urine. there was going to be some type of like survey where it was like from one to ten. No, I mean, you, can, <laughs> I you could, right but now. that's not nearly as accurate. Yeah. Right? And no, I'm, but you measured the exact I'm a scientist. Levels. I want to know the name. But it's an, actual, it's an actual molecule. Though. Yeah. Like, it's, it's something an you can molecule. actually test. Well, it's yeah. a hormone, so, yeah. so it comes out in your salivary glands, which is odd. Is that 
how all hormones? Could you test for any hormone? Um, most hormones. It depends on the hormone. What are what are some examples of some other hormones? testosterone, okay. and estrogen, gotcha. and style, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I think does it, your court affect you your estrogen? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Your court affect your you, testosterone level? Here's here's a good one for you. It lowers your T. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, so the breathing thing that we need to do, let's go ahead and start that now. <laughs> yeah. How does that work? Yeah. I, and honestly, a lot of it is is starting to transition out of this fear base and just being, we talked about being self-aware and being self-aware yeah. of yourself and... Noticing when it's happening. Wait a second. Self-aware of yourself. Yeah. Self-aware of yourself. Being, yeah. PhD sitting right here. <laughs> um, but, but just being able to identify when you're having those when you spikes, need it. when you yep. don't. But yeah. you probably can control it. Once you're, you aware. Breathing, once you're aware, once you're aware, and not and not having to ever get to that to do yeah. it, you probably right. can control it on a daily when you basis. Start, exactly, exactly. And you don't go to that place. That's Is the that idea. True? That's correct. You got it. Huh. You got it. I've already achieved that. <laughs> He's in a Zen mode over here. You can Please. see him levitating in a second. Spit real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you know here. <laughs> We you know how Gary Vaynerchuk always talks. <laughs> you know he always talks about. Um, he's like, when I die, whenever they figure out how to test EQ, he's like, when I die, he's like, I want them to dig my body and sample me. He's like, because I know for a fact I'm all time. I'm all time high. I am. If your core Anities. levels are high, <laughs> also up there. <laughs> I was gonna say humility, but it's low on the list. <laughs> So tell us about, um, a little bit before we go into these other questions about the blind spots, because I know that's a big area of what you talk on. Yeah, absolutely. So I I approach blind spots from a biological perspective, right? I look at brain science and how we are really good at ignoring or listening to our subconscious, right? Which means that we have blind spots in diversity and inclusion and ethics because huh. this this little sucker back here that amygdala and the hippocampus and that ancient brain is set up again for survival hmm. so we can justify and rationalize anything from yeah, there anything. um so uh, yeah i just try and help all the time. yeah exactly i try and help bring that to a conscious spot hmm. um within individuals and organizations and yeah so I mean, something even, that would be good for us as salespeople is to understand um where our blind spots are as to how no matter what some whether whether we're meeting with a female a male Mm -hmm. black white any other ethnicity absolutely as to how we're coming across to them subconsciously absolutely Mm -hmm. and that's there's actually now you're asking you're talking before about and then a paper test too. yeah you can do that on my website so you can go through and you okay. can take a test and you can say oh you probably have a blind spot in this area or this area okay um and then i'm, I'm happy to talk actually to your, any of your viewers too i'm yeah. happy to like one-on-one and sit sure. oh, no cost like sit down and talk with What's them your a little website? bit rebeccaheist.com h-e-i-s-s um so pissed how harris.com state really i'm so angry yeah. that's a shame but now you're the who, tyler who harris correct you, have you found it not yet. Huh. They're working on it. But that's because I own it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Probably. Sell it to you for a high price. I buy all my friends' uh, <laughs> websites <laughs> in case they become popular. <laughs> 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 I'll let you buy that one. <laughs> you have access to my GoDaddy account. I really don't own yeah, that true. many around your name. Where were we? The ethics one is is important too because, you know, we're we're in sales and I think that in sales, I don't know how I don't know how we would look at that ethically or train on that and and maybe get some of your insight on that. But when the sale is on the line, yeah. right? People justify. What are you willing to do? Right? What are you yeah. willing to do to make sure that that happens? Mm-hmm. Um, There's also a, the, one of the things that I talk about a lot with salespeople is competition yeah. and the competition cooperation trade-off, right? Hmm. Where most of us see cooperation as a weakness, let's be honest, yeah. it's associated with weaker words sure. and competition. And how to, how and when to cooperate versus compete and forcing that competition I feel like she's externally. Right now. Dude, <laughs> that's why I had her on here too. Yeah. yeah. Because it's tough. It's tough. It is tough. Yeah. It's really tough. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a male brain. You would rather be rich than right. Come on, buddy. Yeah. 
never <laughs> so that's what we say. That's what we say. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm afraid we probably one. think alike. Yeah, it's a big one. I um, when I'm working with, like, I do a women's leadership group, and I talk about. Uh, Is that something I can send Tyler to? Yes, <laughs> actually, yes, because we need more men in this. This is one of the problems I have. I'm giving women's leadership. I can tell you what I have. The problems are the problem with the men. It's <laughs> We're having the hardest time getting men in I'm having the hardest time leader. getting men to a women's leadership. <laughs> Yeah, Is yeah. That like one of those jokes where they say the difference between marketing and branding or something? <laughs> that would be a good one. If you can come up with it quick, I'd be impressed. No, no I can't. But it's, I mean, it's basically, <laughs> the, the body doesn't necessarily match the brain, right? Yeah. So I, I have a male brain, you know, I'm, I'm analytical, I, I think more like a male. I'm hmm. competitive, I'm driven, I've got high levels of testosterone. Actually, if you want to test your testosterone right now, you can, which is cool. I can show you with your fingers. All right, so take a look at your digit <laughs> ratios. Are just shaking by the way. <laughs> <laughs> your core <laughs> levels are really high. So take a look at your digit ratios between your ring finger and your pointer finger. This sounds like an old wise. If too. your <laughs> yeah, if your ring um, finger you're gonna have three daughters. If your <laughs> ring finger is longer than your pointer finger, you have higher levels of testosterone. Oh, yeah, mine but, is but as that, ginormously tall. But as that changes over time, it doesn't. Your That's fingers, the thing. This is a testosterone-driven characteristic in the womb so your, your testosterone finger. levels will change over time your testosterone levels will change over time for and, sure but that won't change your you're saying if you were born with a natural higher testosterone Correct. than lower gotcha. and, and okay. here's the thing i could test your testosterone right now and it could be astronomical yeah. but if you don't Based have receptors to actually activate that testosterone, it doesn't matter. So you have to have specific receptor sites for those molecules to bind and become active. Huh. So. Or you could have extremely low testosterone. True. And, and still be in a... Which is dangerous. Still be in a high testosterone state if you have enough binders, which is interesting. Interesting. That's yeah. interesting. So they're two completely... So uh, does this so breathing get... give you more binders? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but is what? Receptor sites. Is Receptor the sites. Term, but. Is that the... <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna hyperventilate over here. To <laughs> grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good indicator of testosterone. So yeah. <laughs> don't pass out. Yeah, I knew I shouldn't have shaved last night. <laughs> 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 Great. Mm. I'm actually gonna make that a company policy. <laughs> <laughs> Daily shave. So, so you can measure the growth for testosterone. Yeah. So with blind spots, not to get back on subject or anything. Yeah, no, it's great. But uh, <laughs> in a sales process, because we got a lot of salespeople on this podcast, do you think a lot of that has to do with like being able to sense buying signals and being able to sense like because so much of what we do and and so much of what salespeople like the training and development as far as being able to use certain closes based on uh -huh. the type of buying signals understanding you're the, and, the the feedback that you're getting from yeah. the customer absolutely mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and that's one of the things that i do with my audience or one of the things that i've learned when i'm giving a talk is I'm not gonna win over everybody, yeah. right? I'm mm -hmm. just not. And that's, I, I started that way. I started by going into a talk, I'm like, I'm gonna speak six different languages yeah. and make sure I get everybody. No, I'm not, because mm -hmm. then even the authentic pieces yeah. feel inauthentic, right? I've right. lost y'all. So that's, that's part of it, absolutely, is recognizing, look, you, I'm gonna talk to you, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna talk to you, because I've picked you out, and I know you're speaking my language, and I know I can see you. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so now here's how I need to communicate to you. And then it's up to everybody else, yeah. right? If they want to grow, to come say, I don't understand it seems your like language. It, it seems right? like it'd still even be better for the other people when you're interacting with someone that's on your same wavelength that they can even pick up on that. Absolutely. And they can almost like feed off of that They'll person. Pick up on the authenticity. Like when we speak in front of groups and you have that one guy that's nodding his head every time. Right. Yeah. I'll speak to that guy. I talk to that guy. And I'll Good. let everybody else I'll let everybody else just kind of feed off of his belief in what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yep. Even if they're just like uh kind that's of like arms crossed and, and Yeah but it's almost like you get his trust level and spread it. Yeah. Um yeah, that's interesting. That. And that's funny because, you know, with Gary Vaynerchuk, when he when he speaks in groups, that's why he does so much live q and I think. Mm -hmm. it, number one, because he wants to be a, more tactical and actually provide real value. But sure, the second so. thing, like, if he has 20 people ask a question, between matching those 20 people, 
it's going to branch out into a lot of people that were having those similar type feelings sure. or mm-hmm. questions, and he's and able to just, he's able to relate to so many more people by doing so. Right. Because usually now his talks are like fifteen minutes, and that's an hour of Q and A, yeah. which mm-hmm. is genius. And he's I don't know if there's anybody else doing that, which is interesting. We're, yeah. it, we're actually I mean, going to see him tomorrow. It lets people feel heard, right? Like, yeah. I, exactly. I understand that's that you get big. me. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, we'll see, you're seeing Tony Robbins and Gary tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Oh tomorrow. man, awesome! Yeah, I've never seen Tony before, so well, good. interesting. Yeah, be interested to hear about that. Yeah, it's an incredible company that invests in you like that. (laughs) (laughs) That's very subtle. Very subtle. (laughs) You know, (laughs) whoever made that decision is quite the entrepreneur. (laughs) And we can go into a a whole good topic of if you never ask, you never receive. Right. Uh, True. Oh yeah, you're the one that sent that text to me. (laughs) I forgot about that. We need to go. Hey, hey, can can. Can we go to this and you pay for it? Hey, I, need, I need to go to this. <laughs> well, you can um, good. If you want. good. So one of the things that we had we wanted to ask you is that in speaking to groups, we train people to speak to groups across the country. Right. country. So how, and you do it. So how, what did you do to get more comfortable speaking to groups? <laughs> I did it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's I mean, it's actually, That's the only thing right? we know to do, you, you right? do it. You do it, you do it. And you do it every damn day, yeah. right? And I don't care if I'm not speaking for another week or another month. It doesn't matter. I'm talking to myself in the mirror. I'm talking to people yeah. on the street like I'm mm-hmm. producing the, my entire talk, right? right? Um, and and the about. other thing I do is I speak to individuals, right? I'm looking at you in the eye, and yeah. I'm talking to you, and then I'm talking to you. Um, it's okay. just, it's a conversation. It should be a conversation, mm-hmm. right? It shouldn't yeah. be a... I'm gonna preach at you, kind of yeah. feel, kind of vibe. Well, um, there's so many speakers. I was a preacher, so I mean, <laughs> be very careful. I'm a PK, so she's a preacher's kid. Yeah. Oh, a preacher's kid and a preacher, and we I hate preachers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, this could and be ugly. The part. third intervention. <laughs> and here we have it. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to get nervous. But, you know, maybe it's just me, but it's really hot. Here. <laughs> oh, man. Where's the fire? <laughs> Where's my dad? So the, so the key. <laughs> yeah. So the. Did. Someone just walked by the tank top. Yeah. So, um. Oh, man. I'm sorry. to say. Mm. That's not weird for real. So, uh. Yeah, that's not weird. Anyway, so do, getting comfortable with public speaking, that's all we tell people is you just have to do it. Do it, do yeah. it, do it. I mean, I literally sat my dog down and would, would, would talk, make my dog sit there and listen to me. That's good. And, and would go over and over and over and over in every and, type of situation. And being authentic. I mean, yeah. realizing that everybody is there looking to you to provide them with something, mm-hmm. but you can't give them anything you don't have. So don't, don't yeah. BS people. They hate it. Yeah. Right? Oh, don't, that's good. don't BS you, people. You can't give them anything they right? don't have. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So if you can speak their language and they hear you in a like they hear something they know already, but you're telling it to them in a slightly different way and it elicits that, oh, yeah. it brings it to the front of their brain. That's mm-hmm. awesome. It's great. And, and it's so rare that it's refreshing when you when you see that or when you right. when you're sitting there watching that because the reality is most speakers are really their main concern is is let me go out there and do this forty five minute commercial for of my business and right. myself and my mm-hmm. books and my this and my that. And they're just out there selling themselves. Me me, not me me me. The ones that actually try to think about what does the audience here want to hear and what can they get out of it. Those are the ones that that you're just blown away because it's so polar opposite sure. from what everybody. We're else all does. selling stuff, right? Yeah. And it's it's what what's your pain point? Mm-hmm. How can I serve you? Yeah. Who, yeah. What do you need? All right, this is mm-hmm. what's going to come out of me because I can see that you need this. It's yeah. interesting. I don't know. Just trying to get a read on your audience, and you get better over time. That's yeah, just. Yeah. I still suck. I mean, I do. Do you but have, any, I'm do you have any? Do you have any like weird? I still suck. I do. She speaks <laughs> nation months like I still suck. I'm still terrible at it. <laughs> no, because no, you got to say shit all across the country. <laughs> <laughs> That we're gonna take that out of here. She's, like, she's, she's actually she's really good. Kind of <laughs> <She's laughs> really you didn't cash that check yet, did you? <laughs> Look, the, uh, day, the day I stop being hungry to get better is the day I quit the yeah, circuit. Right. I mean, that's true. You got to keep striving. Otherwise, that subconscious just pulls you right back down to that survival mode. Mm-hmm. You're good enough. Yes. You're good. It's fine. So. so so how would I you? Because we it's like the worst, right? The worst. And that's nature. This that like homeostatic. Pulls here's you right your, back down to the survival. Yeah. Mode. I love. Here's where you survive, and you can 
you can get a little bit better, and then it pulls you right back down. Unless, who's the who's the guy that like rolls the ball all the time up the hill? What's the <laughs> you know the green? The yeah, green yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, what is happening to my phone right now? You're blowing up. This is. is just, it? Oh my gosh! Cut that off. <laughs> um, Sisyphus who is that? or something. He you was, know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he was. That's that's that was what I punishment. see people doing, right? They roll the ball up, they get a little bit better, and then it rolls right back down to their mm -hmm. homeostatic set point. Instead of taking that self awareness and putting it to action, which means you roll the ball up, now you're self aware, now freaking put it to action, put a hold on that. Hmm. Now you can go somewhere, yeah, right? Otherwise, yeah, you just I you're on a treadmill all the time, yeah. What? That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Well, we brought a doctor on, so I figured I'd take out the focus on the quality of the records. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> <clears throat> That's cool, though. Boom. All right. I love the wolf as a symbol. By the way, well, tell us about what you know about wolves and nature, and then was talk to us about. I was gonna ask. Cool. Awesome. And then tell us about how you would define a sales wolf. Mm -hmm. I want to hear about wolves and nature. Wolves and nature. So wolves are a social species. All of them, all of the subspecies of wolves are social, um, which means they're highly cooperative. However, um, they're cooperative within their group. However, to me, uh, a sales wolf is a unique species within the wolf clan. Right? You're the alphas. Yeah. Right, you're that one percent, five percent, whatever it is. By your, she meant. Me. <laughs> just, she was looking at me. <laughs> she was trying to make you feel better. I'm gonna look up here. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> say, I'm gonna look looking, here, and I'm gonna say. Looking at your beard, which may be hiding an actual wolf. You. The alpha wolves, you, right? Are a different species. Not They're, you, Jason. The people behind the camera. She's still talking to me, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, the, the alpha position is really unique in, in biology, right? Um, it's kind of lonely. Um, they're definitely untrusting, constantly looking over their shoulders. Um, and to me, the, the sales wolf idea, this, this alpha, male, female, whatever, mm -hmm. is interesting because they're the first to feed, but they're also the first to leave and start looking for the next kill. Hmm. Right? So they spend a third of their life looking, searching, huh. hunting, prowling, and everybody else follows them. Right? So hmm. that to me, that's, they always stay hungry. You can <laughs> eat, but then they're moving on. So that to me is the sales wolf, right? Hmm. This instinctual, utilitarian, yeah. driven, hungry. Did you ever talk that's to Christopher Young? No. With self awareness. Oh, oh yes, I did. I'm you sorry. Did. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny because he sorry, commented. Sorry, different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so he commented on something that I posted the other day about sales and like some something to do with like how many hours worked or something. And he just commented, it was very simply, just said, sales wolves are always hunting. I love That's all it. Because he so, understands what oh, a sales he wolf is. One, he's, yeah. a, he's a wolf. Yeah. I Oops. sent him a message today, man. That's funny you bring him up. That's Oops. Chris Young at Rainmaker. He's Rainmaker. amazing. Rainmaker he group. is amazing. Rainmaker like the main, group. I, I want to say the website's like the, the Rainmaker Group Inc. dot com or something. But if you just Google Christopher Young Rainmaker, it'll come up. Yeah, yeah. he's incredible. Awesome. Yeah, he has helped. He probably was the exact turning point mm -hmm. to when we started identifying more wolves and and mm -hmm. changing our whole philosophy yeah. on who we because he helped us really we identify working. more in ourselves first and then yeah figuring out so now, into yeah, so now that yeah. we know so now we know more about us trying to find more people that are nothing like us <laughs> <laughs> now that we have the blueprint of what we don't want. <laughs> now that we have the blueprint of by god look, stay away from these people look, you put too many wolves in one group that's too many alphas in one group there's a reason that they're highly you know, hierarchical. That's yeah, true. Somebody That's asked that. me what my hardest job was uh, uh, the other day, and I was like, oh, juggling these egos <laughs> <laughs> is probably one of the hardest, yeah. hardest jobs you, that, I, that I have to do. Do you know any of the mythology with wolves? Because that's another mm -hmm. really interesting. I mean, there's all kinds of different... I mean, for two guys that have a 
podcast with the word wolves, and we really don't know. <laughs> we don't know really shit about wolves. <laughs> That's kind of why you're here. You know, the head's kind of shaped like that, <laughs> and that they kind of look like dogs. They're, they're scary. Yeah, and they howl. <laughs> and they hunt. I want yeah. that howl. All right. Um, my my favorite my favorite mythology for of surrounding wolves is, is Egyptian, and they're a, they're a war deity. Um, huh. And the the name of it I'm blanking on, but the the meaning of it is the opener of ways. That's oh, beautiful. That is the beautiful. opener hmm. of ways. That Bitch. that's a wolf, right? Yeah. You're just gonna open things up, mm-hmm. whether that's your prey, whether that's yeah. the way, the next kill, the next, the next opportunity, opener of the ways. Next. So. Now I know she's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that was kind of like. You do kind of look Egyptian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Al Qaeda. Okay, so, <laughs> so let me just point out some blind spots for you right now. <laughs> uh, disclaimer. I think I can help you guys out. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, so so one of the things that I was going to talk to you about. So do, in your cortisol program, do you do things for companies? Like, do you come Absolutely. in and test companies? Yeah, yeah. We'll All right, do. so and you can you can actually test the cortisol, and then you do your program, whatever your program is for the mm-hmm. company. And everybody Can we have follows a competition it. to see who has yes. the highest. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely, I absolutely. <laughs> so, I drip you. That's how competitive we are. I sweated your cortisol <laughs> just now. That's how competitive we are. We're literally be like, hey, I'm you want to see me have a heart attack first? <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> legit what you're competing over. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna Spoken kill like you by killing myself. I'm gonna kill you. So, I've yeah, laughed more in this podcast than any other one so far. This has been funny. Uh, you, you've been a stand-up comedian. I'm, I'm like finally I'm, coming out of my shell. I know you. <laughs> I'm blossoming. It only took what uh, I'm 782 Facebook lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Maybe that's what it is. It's the cortisol. I, I can see it going down already. The, it is gosh, very glossy. It's so it's, comfortable. It is kind of glossy. Man. <laughs> 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 just shit all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me get that container. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Take a beer that's funny. sample. All right, yeah. so tell us about that. Okay, so, yeah, so, so, and after your part, you can test it. Yes, yeah, so and that's you can the, show lower That's the whole quality. idea, right? I, I'm, I'm a scientist. I like results. I don't like ROI. So if you're going to buy this program, I want to show you that it, that it freaking works, yeah. right? So you test day one, first wake up, spin to a cup. First thing. Yeah, first, thing. first thing. First thing. As soon as you wake up, you can just kind of passively drool into this thing. Lock it up, stick it in the freezer. Why passively? I don't understand why you can't. Well, if you spit, it's more bubbles, and then it's just a pain in the butt to run the sample. Gotcha. So. Seems like a hard thing to. Well, it's passive, so. <laughs> it's hard. I know. I can't so like, still I don't know. Have you ever done it? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> this is gonna be the worst ahead, ten minutes of podcast history. <laughs> <laughs> he's drooling. You, he's got some coming. Oh, get it. There's there's, a, there's a test reward. you can like yawn. Yawning increases salivary. Okay. You know, so we'll get you through it. Yeah, is yawning also a sign of um, high no. cortisol? Is no. It not? No. Do you know they hear about like oxygen to your brain or all? Dude, that's oh, just a little that's pretty sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I will say you, you might yawn more. Urban legend. My test. Testosterone That's more than you. <laughs> the you may be yawning more because you're not sleeping, and well, that's yeah. certainly a, <laughs> a measure of court, yeah, right? True. Um, anyway, so yeah, we passively collect, um, throw that sample in the freezer. You go through this 21 days. Um, it's less than 10 minutes a day. That's because listen, time is precious, and yeah. frankly, it, so you just, only do something for 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day, right? So that includes a, a morning audio, which is just a focus for the day, getting you breathing, getting you sort of ready for the day, um, and a, is a that journey. Tyler's voice that I have to listen to? It's like? actually my voice, which right. is super Much uncomfortable. Better. Right? It's super uncomfortable to have to listen to your voice over and over again. But I don't think it would do well for my cortisol <laughs> levels. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. Isn't it proven like your brain, it, like whenever you open your mouth to talk, that's the only time that your brain actually shuts down to listen. Completely. You ever heard that? <laughs> Not heard that. Right now, I'm thinking he's been that. telling our viewers this for, <laughs> for 19 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we get a doctor on here. She's like, "What?" Okay. <laughs> We're like, no, that is, not, that is not true. true. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the opposite. It's actually. <sighs> I'll uh, I'll look into it. I'll let you know. I'm pretty sure I read that in the magic of thinking. I think it was Morgan Freeman's voice. <laughs> it was that. You hear him say something. I will absolutely shut down and listen. There's no doubt. Yeah. 
Yeah. So then, yeah, 21 days of that. Um, it comes with a journal that, you know, helps you keep on track. Just because, <laughs> honestly, analog is just bad. Is there anything at night? Did you say there's something at night? Um, it's optional. You can do it throughout the day. You can okay. do it at night, gotcha. however it works um, gotcha. best. I, is I, it better to do it more than once or just do 10 minutes one time? To no. me, this is how I do it, and people are going to do different things. But um, I wake up, I start my day with the, you have to start the day. You have to. You have to do it. Start the day with the audio. Because okay. it sets you up for the full day. And then I like to take time right before I go to sleep, spend two minutes jotting things down in the journal. And there's okay. things in the journal like, how much water did you drink today? So it might be useful to just carry it around. It's super uh, sure. check boxes as you go mm -hmm. kind of thing. Awesome. Um, right. And then after 21 days, spit in a cup again, send those samples to the lab. It comes in a little prepaid package. So you literally throw it in the yeah. UPS and we test so it, you, send you the results. So you, they, don't know the results of the first test until they until after right. the second one. Right. Gotcha. It's that just easier. Some, it's easier for us to run samples together that yeah. way. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yep. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. We'll Pretty have cool. to do that. Please do. I'll, yeah, I'll happily know. provide samples for you guys. That would be my gift to you for sure. They're probably gonna want to open us up. <laughs> I honestly, it's just a curiosity. But we need you to thing. come in on Monday. <laughs> yeah, that's never good. We've never we've never seen this before. <laughs> yeah, I'd be it's really curious. Something's mutating. We don't something know what it is. Can <laughs> become an X man. Mm -hmm. That might be true. With the Ice Man. <laughs> the Ice Man. Yeah. Uh, ice Man Wim Hof. So ice cold water. Does that matter? Um, I, I do cold water baths. It depends. It depends, and a lot of this again is is perceived. Right, so if you perceive that it's that it's doing great things, it's doing great things, which is amazing. Your brain is incredible like that. If you perceive that this so is I'm helpful, I'm putting myself through that for nothing. No, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily. I'm gonna actually just imagine I can <laughs> from now on. <laughs> actually, you can do that. Yeah. I'm not joking. If you you go through some of these things and you, you just that. imagine. <laughs> What are you doing right Wait, now? you're going to watch it? <laughs> watch him imagine this. You're going to walk in and I'm going to be at my desk just shivering. <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was a fascinating study actually where they had uh, two, two groups. One group had to practice the piano for like two hours a day. The other group just had a piano there and they weren't allowed to touch it. But they imagined that they were practicing the piano. Hmm. And they measured the, their ability and their... Um, I forget exactly what they looked at, but some of the connections in, in the brain, identical. Hmm. So it's your imagination is really powerful. And again, I know you guys talk a lot about you know, negative chatter and things that we tell yeah. ourselves and all of that fear-based mm -hmm. thinking. It is super powerful. Yeah. So, you know, rewiring that brain mm -hmm. is, is this, important. This kind of relates, but not really. Cool. <laughs> That's how I like to intro all this. <laughs> is how, <laughs> say. This is how Tyler <laughs> Insert that transition. Project. Um, this is this is exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was listening to something the other day when I was trying to fall asleep, and that's why I may or may not relate. But um, this guy was talking about the study that they did, where they gave this group of people, like a large group of people, they gave them half and half, two stories to go study. They were stories from the Bible. One of them was about the Good Samaritan, and one of them was about something just completely random. Smite right? the heathen. And then yeah, it was just random, like something. <laughs> <laughs> and and they had this uh, they had this person like right outside the, the oh, office yes, they're located yeah. when they walked out like having trouble like like standing or something and they they documented who helped and who didn't help yeah. and was it the good Samaritan versus the other story and it made no difference yeah no difference unbelievable so what you're telling me is that. That's the part where I fell asleep, so I don't really know what the moral of the story like. I, can I found it fascinating. The, I can tell you what the moral of the story is, is that I shouldn't have wasted that many years. <laughs> Trying to be a good Samaritan. No, you wouldn't. Trying to be a good Samaritan. Dude, it's, it's action, right? Yeah. It's, you can be self-aware. You can be aware of yeah. this is a good story and people should act like that. Mm. Now put it into action. Well, that's what we always Motion, talk about. We always right? talk about the fact that something that's easy to do is also even easier not to do. Absolutely. Like it's, it's easy Path to do it, but it's, easy, it's easier not to do it. Yeah. So, that is funny. Was that you that we were talking, I was talking about that? With what? Were you and I talking about that? Easy to do or easy not to yeah. do? Yeah. I was talking about that with my brother yesterday. He was going, we were talking about his little girl and he was like, you know, because I was telling him what an awesome dad he is. He is such a great dad. 
And um, and he goes, you know, it's easy to be a good dad. It's also easy not to be mm-hmm. a good dad. Like it's sure. it's easy to be a good friend, mm-hmm. right? You just do these things. We all know. We all know this is what you do, and you're yeah. a good friend. Mm-hmm. But it's also just as friggin' easy not to be a good friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, Simple, uh, not easy. Well, usually when the first bead of sweat pours down the side of my face is when we wrap up on the uh, podcast. Is it boring? <laughs> so, is it time? <laughs> no, not yet. But this has been awesome. Cool. I have yeah, enjoyed this. I appreciate really cool. it. Well, thanks Did you for have any questions me. for us? Or, I mean, you've actually provided all the content. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I should have probably. Shut I mean, is there anything that we can? You. Is there anything that we can educate you on? <laughs> yeah, yes. You can sell you yes. Right? There's plenty. By the way, there's what plenty. type of life insurance do you have? <laughs> <laughs> there's this company called Consolidated. Something. Yeah, yeah. Something or another. Consolidated yeah. or another. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, guys. absolutely. Really so, so how, how can people find you on social media? Uh, Dr. Rebecca Heist on Twitter, okay. RebeccaHeist.com, InstinctiveCognition.com, then go check out that program. Do you use Twitter directly? I do. Oh, I try yeah. to. I yeah. honestly, here's my problem. I'm just like, I know I've that it increases it. my stress level. Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> it true. It does. And so For I, sure. and so knowing that, I'm very careful about limiting my social media, even though I also know that that's my market, right? Yeah. So hmm. it's a balance. You know, balance. you know, the funny thing is, like, with all the stuff I've been doing on social media lately, people uh, assume that that you're consuming a lot of it but i've been consuming like no social media because i'm just you're documenting producing. so much on it sure. that i literally like the other day i was scrolling through a field i was like man i haven't done this in forever because i'm usually sitting there posting something or yeah. on live mm-hmm. or something like that it's, it's interesting. I, creating I, don't know, I, don't how, I don't know how that affects the cortisol but it's not good actually it's it's probably <laughs> it's better than con- than consumption yeah, no, no, yeah. that for sure. Because it's like boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. It's like one thing. It's it's like so many extremes. Your brain right never gets another. bored, and that's a problem. You can fill your brain. That's with a problem. Them. Oh God, yes. It's a problem not to be bored. I think so. Here, here let me let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Like being able to pause. Being able to pause, right? Because we're so quick to say, what what happens if you, you go take a dump, right? What do you do? You, you don't sit there. Have you, you watched my stuff? There. You don't take it anywhere. Only a self-depreciating person would take it with them. I'm just <laughs> telling you. That's, you don't. I mean, like, I actually did no, a whole talk on that. You I know. I heard it. Did you? That's why I used that reference, oh, by was the way. It? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could have said, you know, I don't know, you don't, like, take a lunch. You, uh, right? You well, don't. Because you do take a lunch. You, you, you take that with you, and then you go leave a dump <laughs> after lunch. <laughs> As you're consuming that lunch, what are you doing? Are you actually consciously aware that you're eating a lunch or are you eating a lunch while you're talking with people oh, and yeah. doing Good your social media things, yeah. and, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the fact hmm. that you never say, okay, I'm literally just going to sit here. I'm just going to sit here and let thoughts come to my mind. That's when you're most creative. You understand but that. Instead, I just broke like, into a sweat when she said that. You're just going to sit here, like sit uh, and do nothing. Yeah, because here's what happens. The second you're bored, you go, oh, here, hang on. And you mm-hmm. entertain yourself, but it's mm-hmm. just mindless. Yeah, sitting and doing nothing is really tough. Really tough. And probably will increase your court for a few seconds. That's what Gary's been talking about, these meditation spots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the next big It will thing be right? huge. It will it will be a place huge. where you literally pay to, to walk in, phone. check your phone, go into a tiny room with lighting and just sit there. By the way, that's that's, that's my we dream. Were... That's that's where this is going. Yeah. I want to provide that for people. That's awesome. that's, it's necessary. That's what we're going to use your office for. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad for that. <laughs> Yeah. You will no longer be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the road. He's, <laughs> okay. he's judging you from your uh, um, your testosterone levels. Yeah, there. yeah. It's, uh, you got some long fingers. Whatever that means. <laughs> Excellent proto- proctologist. <laughs> oh lord! <laughs> <laughs> your face just looks like, so disturbed. Dude, I just I just oh, whimpered man. a little inside and curled up and I'm I'm just I feel like this podcast is really right now. Extremely to like, intelligent to like kindergarten. Low brown. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I have a way of dragging the best of them down into that. I think that was all me with the taking it down. Yeah. <laughs> So, so we told where you can find um, friend her. So with me, it's just at Tyler Harris page on everything: Instagram, Facebook. And you're the Joseph Caldwell on Instagram, Facebook, everything. Yep. Um, and then obviously the Sales Rules podcast. As you guys know, we're not selling anything um, unless you want to sell us your 
um, spit or drool, uh, then, <laughs> then, then, then we, can, we can do that. But, uh, but what would mean the world to us is if you would share this video, if you got anything out of it, I'm sure somebody did. I got a ton out of it I did too. Uh, today. Um, so lot. if you did, please yeah. share it. That way someone on your newsfeed, as they're screwing, <laughs> as they're screwing, your as they're scrolling, that's as a they're spike. scrolling. You've learned that it is, spike. your cortisol oh levels are it's spiking when you're scrolling. Oh, it's so hot in here. <laughs> it, it is. is. Really hot. This is the only time I feel comfortable now. Because <laughs> you're in an ice bath right now. I'm in an ice bath. I'm screwing in an ice bath. Right this minute. I feel really uncomfortable. Oh, man. I don't even know how so you now have So you now have decided not to share it. You were about to share it. And but then you just and then the five you second roll kicked and in. And now you've reported us to all the other Now armies. the five second roll kicked in and your brain's like, no, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. But we appreciate you guys tuning in as always. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And Dr. Rebecca Heist. And we are the this Sales Wolves. Thank you. That felt <sighs> good. It's awesome, right? That was really good. That sounds that sounds weird. <laughs>